Hey everyone, my name is Magan and welcome back to Indie Showcase. So today we're going to be playing Rain Swept. So one thing I'll say before we start off, uh, something that I normally say at the end of the video. If you guys could consider sharing this video on your like Facebook, Twitter, anything like that, not for my sake, mainly for the developer's sake. Um, they obviously put a lot of work into these kinds of games and that's the whole point of this show really is to um, help get the word out about these games. Even if you don't like it, you might have a friend that does. Um, so it's always worth doing um, just in case, you know? So thank you for listening to that. Um, but yes, so Rain Swept is it's basically an adventure mystery game. Um, so I'll read the description from the Steam page and then we'll get into the game itself. So Detective Michael Anderson enters a small town of Pineview to assist the local police force with a seemingly simple case. A couple is found dead in their kitchen. The locals believe it to be a case of murder-suicide, their speculation fueled by rumours of the turbulent nature of the couple's relationship. Is it just idle gossip, or is there some truth to the rumours? But help Detective Anderson, assisted by the driven and empathetic Officer Blunt, discover the truth behind Chris and Diane's story. But be warned, the further he pursues the case, the more his own partial comebacks will haunt him, and the closer his own sanity will be pushed to the edge. Uh, so this is a game made by uh, Frostwood Interactive, and um, that's pretty much the gist of everything. I'll leave links to the game's website, it's itch.io page where you can download the game and all, and find all the information about where you can follow uh, this yourself, like their Twitter, their Facebook, things like that. Um, so with that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, I'm gonna go for a new game. Here we go. It should be interesting. Monday, 12.14 a.m. October 7th, 1996. All right, we're starting off rough. <laughs> oh, that looks cool. Frostwood Interactive, people who made the game. From all the little trailers I've watched and the screenshots, it's got a, a very interesting like art style and stuff like that. It it makes me think of um, Twin Peaks. I mean, I've I've never watched the show properly. I know people are gonna hate me for that, but it kind of just it has that vibe about it at the moment. Obviously, because it's set in a small, like, town, villagey place. And it's a murder mystery. Sound effects are good. So, let's see what happens. Okay, Monday, 7.35am. October 7th, 1996. So, this is clearly the morning after. Yep. <clears throat> Press E on the keyboard, A on the controller. I had some trouble getting the controller to work, <laughs> but it's all fine now. Right, all right, I'm here. Oh, time to see what all this is about. Okay, controller. Hold right trigger to run. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> I like the little animations. Uh, okay. So what can we do? Um, I'm not going to back now. Okay, so A to kind of select stuff, and then you use uh, X, A, B, or Y in corresponding to the position of the picture. So if I press B, it's going to look at it. That's my car. Yeah, see? <laughs> Do -do -do. <laughs> Having a little casual walk. Oh, what's this? Now, why would I do that? We've been here a while, it looks like. Terrible. What? I said terrible. Terrible business, all this. Huh. This was only a matter of time. Everyone knows that. I know. Still, it was so young. Not only stupid, you mean. The stories I've heard. I guess you're right. It was just a matter of time. What? It was a matter of time. It's really coming down today. We should get back home. A few more minutes. I want to see what happens. Nothing's going to happen. I'm going to catch a cold. That's all. 
Alright, moving on. So the crime scene. Oh, let's have a look at the door. That's the way in. I should take a look around out here before heading in. That's the way inside. I wonder why Chief sent me all the way to Pineview for this case. Only one way to find out. The crowd is too close to the crime scene. The number of cops are too few. This is poor. Now, what's he up to? Ma'am, please. You need to back away a little. What's happened here? A murder? Johnny, get under the umbrella. Granny, I want to leave. Can I go back to the shop? I could see this coming a mile away. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. Alright, Johnny. Let's go. There's no point standing here now. Sorry, it was difficult to work out who was actually speaking there. I knew this would happen. We should have done something. There's nothing we could have done. Chris is responsible. I'm so sure. Uh, it's hard to disagree, but let's not speculate. Detective Anderson, right? The chief is inside. They've been waiting for you. You need to control the crowd, officer. You need to push the crowd further from the scene, officer. What? You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. The crowd. Handle them. There could be evidence out here. Oh, yes. I'm trying... Hey. Hey, Williams. What the hell are you doing? Uh, trying to prop up this tape, sir. It won't stay. Well, get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir. Richard. Don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Goodness. Sorry, Detective. Thing is, we're short of manpower here. We weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. And to top it off, this rain, out of nowhere. Just get the crowd under control. I'm heading inside. Yes, Detective. Don't worry. Richard! I mean, Williams. Alright, so it looks like we're heading into the house to find out what's going on. Should I go in? Uh, maybe maybe I can talk to the guy here first. Oh, no. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's not much to do out here, so we're going to head straight into the house. No point hanging out here. Ooh, gruesome. Oh, God. That's the sheriff. I should talk to him first. Oh, all right, here we go. Not very professional. I hope they know what they're doing. Can I do anything else while I'm here? Nope. Okay, they're just taking pictures. Michael? Huh? Oh, God, what's happening? Oh. Uh, detective? Are you okay? Ugh. I think so, yeah. Guess I'm just a little tired after the long drive here. Uh, Detective Anderson, right? The head office called in to say that you'd be joining us here for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris, and this is Lieutenant Watt. We appreciate the department sending help, but uh, I don't think we'll need it. This case is ready to be wrapped up. What do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head, looks self-inflicted. And Diane Miller, age 24, single bullet wound through the abdomen, the victims live together, were unmarried. Ooh, I get to questions, people. Questions, people? I don't care, I'm leaving that in. <laughs> um, any signs of an intruder? No signs of forced entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. An officer climbed through the open window here to the door to open the door. There are no footprints outside that window. Except the officers. He was careful. No signs of struggle or marks on the bodies either. Okay, time of death. What was the time of death? It was very early in the morning, didn't we? According to the next door neighbour, a single gunshot was heard around 0, 0,1500 hours. Uh, not zero fifteen hundred. Uh, you know, 
<laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> we received the call at about uh, 0, 0, 020 hours and we're here in another five minutes. We found them dead upon arrival and confirmed the timing. Okay, the weapon. Oh, no, it's a gun. What do we know about the weapon? Both shots were fired from a M1911A1.45 caliber pistol. The ballistics report will let us know more. Okay. Any witnesses? Just an excellent neighbours who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Yes, there's clearly two bullet wounds, but they only had there was only a single gunshot? That can't be right. Honestly speaking, Detective, we think it's pretty obvious what's taking place here. What do you mean? They had a reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows this. Diane was shot at point blank range with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. He then went ahead and shot himself, as the wound is clearly self inflicted. So you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. Ooh, do I question her abilities or do I remain silent? Um, I think I'm going to remain silent. I think that questioning their abilities might annoy them. So, just stay quiet. It's obviously a case of murder-suicide, Detective. So everything's... F so we've got it all figured out already, huh? If that was sarcasm, I'll ignore it. But yes, more or less. I, uh... Are you suggesting there was domestic violence involved? It would seem so. It was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, rumours. We may call it that, but, uh... Where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not sure that... And they were never really able to fit in this town. They were new here, moved in about six months ago. Never got out much. Didn't make any friends. We don't need to analyse the obvious, Detective. That would only be inefficient. Officer Blunt will assist you through the course of your work here. And uh, one more thing. We're looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want it to drag out if it can be helped. We have an important festival coming around in a week's time, so you might say this is uh, rather bad timing. So there's no need to go around complicating things, all right? Just get me a story that works and we can close this case quickly. Okay, um, okay, good. I shall see you later, goodbye. Okay then. <clears throat> anyway, have a look around the room if you'd like. Come and talk to me when you're done. All right, time to investigate the scene. I'm gonna go from right to left, I think. Okay, that's as far as I go, so let's look at the wine first. Red wine. Looks like a new bottle was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass? It would seem that Chris is sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane. Whether he was waiting for her or someone else, we don't know yet. The glass of wine was knocked over. This looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in here as well. How did blood spatter in this direction? It doesn't make sense. Officer Blunt, I think there's been more than the two gunshots that we're seeing here. Interesting. Okay, let's look at the victim here. Bullet wound to the head. The skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. Oof. His body position, the way he fell, would indicate that he was sitting sideways on the chair, facing where Diane's body is now. The angle of the shot indicates that he was shot from this side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the refrigerator. No clues there, though. He could have been shot from that window. At the moment, it's shut. Must get a check for fingerprints and footprints outside. Could someone have entered and left through here? Oh, we should have the fingerprints results in a couple of days, Detective. Don't forget there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris would have sat facing the refrigerator. That would make sense. The way that, that way, the killer wouldn't need to enter the house. But in that case, who shot Diane? Ooh, examine the hand. Hmm. Gunpowder residue on his right hand. Hard to disagree with the lieutenant here. This is strong evidence for the victim shooting himself. Unless it was made to look that way. The chair's fallen on his back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> um, 
Okay, let's look at the murder weapon. An M1911 A1.45 caliber pistol. As the lieutenant said, it looks pretty old. It can hold seven rounds. There are four rounds still in here. This means three rounds were fired from this gun at some point of time. And two were fired last night. Where's the third? Was it used on some other day? The gun belongs to Chris, according to Lieutenant Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else that could have known where they kept the gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of full sentry. Could it be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? No one I can think of. Not very professional, hope they know what they're doing. Yeah, cool, that's fine, we've done that one. Gunshot to the stomach. The damage in the residue would suggest the shot was taken at point blank range. That rules out the possibility of her being shot from the open window. She would have been in line of sight from the outside though. There's no mistaking it. The perpetrator would have to be inside the house to cause this kind of a wound. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. Hmm, okay, interesting. Oh, what does that say? Hmm, what's this? Chris, 96. It's signed Chris, 96. I'm guessing Chris built some of the furniture around this house. Alright, uh, can I? Yeah, I can talk to her, can't I? Hey, detective? Need any help? What's the plan? Have a look around the room. Once you don't talk to Lieutenant Watts. Oh, okay, is that it? Oh, hold on. Uh, I didn't check this, did I? 0.45 ACP rounds. It's a box of 20 rounds. There are 13 here, which means seven are missing. Two were used last night. There are four left in the gun, as we saw earlier. If two were used last night, there is still one unaccounted for. Was that used on some other day? Okay, interesting. Well, I think... I think I've looked at everything. So let's talk to my man over here. Shall we proceed? Yeah. Yes, I'm done. Alright, let's have a chat outside with Mr. Willis. The rain has finally let up. Yeah, apparently there's lots of coffee in this in this game. Oh, uh, <laughs> look, we do a little skip. Skippity! <laughs> okay, let's talk to people. Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right there next door. Coffee detective? Of course. Of course I'm going to take coffee, always. Yes, thank you. You can ask him any questions you might have about last night. Right, Mr. Willis. Can you tell me everything you saw or heard during last night's event? Well, see, I headed off to bed at around 11pm as I usually do after a glass of whiskey. Helps me sleep, you know. Anyway, somewhere around 12.15am I say I was woken up by a loud bang. I ran to my bedroom window. That looked straight down at their place. And what did you see? Nothing. Their kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went to my phone and called Lieutenant Watts here straight away. How long did it take you to get to the window? Once you heard the shot. About a couple of seconds, Detective. No, no more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell out of bed when I heard the shot, so you might say I was halfway there already. Okay, did you see anyone at all on the streets? Right, did you see any sort of activity on the streets? Anything unusual? No, Detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. You said you heard a single gunshot. Yes. The whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good, so if there'd been more, I didn't hear him. Okay, move on to other questions. Do you live alone? Yes, I do. Now yeah, I got married. It's a long story. Well, I'm meant to be talked over a couple of whiskeys. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? I... no. I was just at home, you see. Am I a suspect? This procedure, Mr. Wh I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna react. Don't, don't get in the way of my investigation, Sonny. We'll need to have a talk later, Lieutenant. Talk? 
About what? Just later, okay? Okay, Sherlock, whatever you say, Holmes. <laughs> Ugh. Did Chris and Diana have any have many visitors? Friends, etc.? No. No, not at all in fact. In all this time I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car. And Father Smith came over a couple of times when they'd newly moved in. A year back almost. Nah. People rarely vis ever visited him. Because they mostly kept to themselves, see? Never made any friends here. But sometimes folks don't like that kind either. So I can't really say. Know what I mean? No, please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really knew them. They never got out much. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? I, uh... Don't know if this is useful, but... You might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple of times. Usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early, so... Maybe that's why I never heard all this before. But a couple of times, I was up a little later. One night about a month ago... I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud... Loud sounds. Like stuff being flung around and such, see? I heard someone crying. I was thinking to myself that maybe I should call the police. But then it quietened down all of a sudden. We never received any calls for domestic violence, but people have often talked of stories of this kind. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? Well, I was up late night writing an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere between 1st to 3rd last month. 1st to 3rd of September. Alright, anything else? No, that's all I know about this. Right, thanks for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. No problem, and uh, thanks for the coffee. <laughs> Cool, yeah, so this, this seems very interesting, actually. I'm enjoying this. I like I like games where it's, there's a lot of story. Um, and obviously this being a mystery, there's going to be a lot of things you're going to have to try and like figure out. So there's bound to be a lot of uh, dialogue. So, Detective, you said you wanted to have a talk later. Is now a good time? Yes, Lieutenant. Please don't tell eyewitnesses. They're not under suspicion. Especially not in front of them. So, basically, you're telling me that I don't know how to do my job. Is that it? All I'm saying is, this case isn't all wrapped up as you'd like to believe. How can you not see what's right in front of you? It's so obvious. Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots, and there are no signs of anyone forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? We don't know the complete picture yet. The amount of information we have as of now is very little. It's not the complete picture. We need to dig deeper if we want to know the truth and not just confirm our assumptions. Well, what what about the door, huh? How is it locked from the inside? Explain that. I checked the door. It locks itself from the inside when you pull it close. Regardless of whether you pull it from the outside or push it from inside. Yeah, in your face. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you like, detective. You won't find anything new here. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself. But of course, the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap up this case before the festival. So I don't expect him to wait for more than a week. I have to head to the station now. Officer, escort Detective Anderson to his hotel. Will do, sir. I don't like him. He's going to get on my nerves. We'll come back in the evening to search the houses. Letters, diaries, things of that sort. Alright. Uh, when can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow. I'll call into the coroner, but I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look around the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets? But... Hmm. We're actually glad that you're here, you know. Although the Sheriff and Lieutenant Watts would rather not admit it, even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last 100 years or so. We have no idea how to deal with it. Um, I mean... Yeah, it's alright, I know what you mean. I just joined the force a month back, for instance. And a murder already? I'm not really sure if I'm ready. I kind of knew them, you could say. I've never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's kind of weird, a bit sad. 
I know as an officer I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. You'll be fine. Give it time. Thanks, Detective. That means a lot. Tell me about Kristen's I am. What do you know about them? Well, not much. It's mostly what Miss Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody really knew them. They came in here, kept themselves. He'd hear stories about them. Everyone thought they were some kind of weirdos. I admit, I kind of agree with that sentiment too. I feel bad about that now. There's no reason to make assumptions about people's character. And character can't be used as evidence. So I'd really like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. So this, the sheriff said that there's a festival in town next week. What's that about? Oh, it's an annual thing. Uh, we have it every October. There's a fair on the Market Street. There's food, rides. We get a lot of tourists from nearby states around that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our small businesses here. That, of course, is less important in the light of recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course. We can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these were people's lives that ended. And it's our job to figure out what really happened. So I guess what I'm saying is... You can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. Okay, end dialogue. I'm hoping the local police will, let, police will let me do the job I've been sent to do, though. I don't mean you. Detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an arsehole. I'm serious. He doesn't care about anything except running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy the festival week. I hate people like that. Lieutenant Watts, though, he's really sweet. I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but... Oh, my God. Holy crap. I wasn't expecting that. Also, that clearly looked like a very straight road. How did you not see that from, like, a mile off? I saw her. She was right there. Why am I seeing it? Why am I thinking of her? Oh, this is going to be a figment of his imagination, isn't it? When I get to move about. I'm going to go from left to right this time. Jeez, I hope she's not hurt. How's the car looking? I don't know. Ah, oh, Shaq. He's working on it. Talk to me when you're done. Alright. Hmm. Tar. Shovel. What do Jack uses them for? Paving. <laughs> I'd assume. My poor car. That would be dangerous. He sure would. So did that actually hit anything, Cor? Hmm. He said his name's Jack. It's a good thing he, wa he was passing by when the crash happened. You look kind of uncomfortable. Do you need the car to be on a ramp or something? Nah, man, you worry too much. Um, what's the issue with the car? Well, the, the headlight and bumper's gone. You'll need to have them replaced. I'm going to have to check if I've got a replacement part so I can fix it. How, how long will it take you to... How long will it take for you to fix it? A couple of days, three maybe, depending on how quickly I can get the parts. It shouldn't take more than four days at most. Oh boy. Hey, dude, can you fetch me a big red wrench? It should be in a toolbox outside. All right. You're amazing, bud, thanks. Okay, Jack got us here in that. Oh, this is Jack's car. I think I'll wait for my car to be fixed instead. So this is the toolbox. That could be the toolbox Jack mentioned. Yep. Let's see what's inside here. Take big red wrench. That's what you asked for. Ooh, look at this nice shiny convertible. Oof, what a beauty. Yeah. I wonder if it's Jack's. Man, I'd love to, but I don't think Jack would appreciate me doing it. Okay, anything else? No, nothing else seems to be that way. So we're going to go back and talk to Jack. Uh, okay, so I could talk to him again. Or is he going to say the same thing? Hey, you found that wrench yet? Yes, I have. Here you go, give him the wrench. Press Y to give wrench. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I love this wrench. Thanks, bud. Ask about convertible. That red convertible there, is that yours? Yeah, man, a 65 Mustang. Love that ride. I got it used for pretty... I got it used for pretty cheap off a guy who couldn't take care of her anymore. Luckily... Car's got something that keeps it running like new now. You? 
You're pretty smart. Yeah, it's got me now. I spend all my free time on her, fixing her up and making sure she runs better than new. And I keep her happy by taking her on long, beautiful drives on the roads outside town. <laughs> I'm gonna ask about time shovel. You got a shovel and some tar over there. What do you use this for? Uh, that? Dude, I do a bit of construction work on the side sometimes. You know, fixing up driveways and stuff. For some extra cash. Okay, end conversation. Oh no. Uh, I meant to end conversation. Detective, you're here investigating Dan's murder, right? And Chris, yes. Do you have any information that can help us? Oh, I don't know about information, man. I just know that he did it. What do you mean? Chris, he killed her. Mm. Why'd you say that? Yeah. I. Everyone could see it coming. Diane. They say she was troubled. Scared of him, even. Someone in this town should have done something. We all know this could happen. But no one cared enough about them to bother interfering. How do you know all of this? I've got some sort of weird American accent with him. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Rumors around town, mostly. Not even a good American accent, I bet. <laughs> uh, did you know Chris and Diane well? Not really. People who barely did. They were not the kind to come out and make friends with the neighbors. It looks like. They still felt like outsiders to the rest of us. Alright, what were you doing last night? I... What was I doing last night? Yes, that is what I asked. Oh. I... Oh, right. I, I drove a couple of miles from here. Drank a few beers while I enjoyed the view. At night. Yeah. Stars, man. You see. Was there anyone with you? Did you meet anyone? Nah, man. There's nothing like the pleasure of your own company, sometimes. Alright, thanks for your help, Jack. We shall be back if we have any more questions. Of course you will. What do you mean, Jack? For your car, man. Come back when it's fixed. You get way too serious. Way too fast, man. Chill out. Alright. So, what do I do in the meantime? Oh, I've got to go talk to the uh, detective. Oh, I was about to say she's gone. But no, she's she got up and moved. Jeez, I hope she's not hurt. Yeah, okay. Let's have a conversation. Hey. Hi. Oh, yeah, I'm going to see if she's okay. You sure you're okay? Yeah. I'm fine, surprisingly. I'm going to apologize to the accent. I'm really sorry about the crash. I don't know what... It's all right. Especially since we're okay. Something else worries me, though. What's that? What happened back there? How did we hit that tree? I think... She's going to be my partner through this whole endeavour, so I'm going to be completely honest with her. I think that's going to be the only, like, the best way you can build some sort of partnership, so... I'm going to be honest. I thought I saw something. What did he see? Ooh, I say completely honest. A person or a ghost. I don't know who this person is. It's got to be someone from my past, but I don't know if they're dead, but... I'm, I'm, well, they might not be dead. Like I said, they might just be a figment of my imagination. So technically, that would be a ghost. So, I'm going to say a ghost. A ghost. I can't tell if you're joking if you're being serious. Anyway, I don't think it's funny. Are you okay? Just generally. I mean, I don't know you, so I don't know if this is a regular thing. No offence. No, that's okay. I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, you collapsed back there at the crime scene too. And then this? Yeah, I don't know. I've been a little dizzy all day. Maybe I just need a nap. Seeing this kind of stuff kind of bums me out. Um, I'm just saying, if there's anything wrong, you can talk to me about it. Don't hesitate. I won't. Detective! Mr. Trucker Cat with your skinny jeans <laughs> and white white beer. <laughs> I'm going to drive... I'm going to drive to the next town for some spare parts. Uh, want me to drop you to the hotel or something? Hmm. I'd like to take a walk around town first, actually. I call up the station from Jack's phone. Car is on the way. No drop us off at the Market Street and your luggage at the hotel. You take care now, dude. Until we meet again. This is really interesting so far. I'm going for it. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave things here, actually. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, that'll encourage you lot to go try out the demo for yourself. Um, but yeah, this is really, really cool. I'm 
I normally like I normally like action games and things like that um, that have like a story to them, but this is completely like story driven. So there's not much um, like fast action kind of stuff, but it's it's really really good. Uh, the art style's like very cool, and yeah, I'm 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 intrigued by the actual mystery of what's happened. Um, so yeah, I'm very much enjoying this so far. So. With that being said, um, I will leave all the links down in the description below to where you can find this game, where you can download it for yourself. Um, if you want to follow along, you can go to the website and sign up to their mailing list. And um, yeah, don't forget to share this video, like I said at the beginning. Uh, hit the like button, comment, feel free to do whatever you want, but mainly please share the video just because this is a very cool game. <laughs> And I think it deserves some like exposure. So please, please do that. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much for watching today. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye.